Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitpatrick.com, out here for another gear view, and today I'm talking about something kind of interesting, the Model S1 Radiation Detector by Better Geiger. So, broad strokes, what is it? Well, it's a radiation detector. You're probably familiar from movies and stuff like a Geiger counter. This works similarly to that. Bunch of nuance to it as far as how this works differently, but still detects radiation. And I think it's pretty neat on a couple fronts. One, just kind of on an educational front, and then two, potentially on the preparedness front. But we'll get into, I guess, a little bit of radiation and kind of what we're talking about with respect to radiation so that we can talk about how this is actually working. Big picture when we're talking about radiation with respect to this, which radiation? So you have like radio waves, you have UV from the sun, all of these different types of radiation. We're talking about ionizing radiation. So potential to break molecules apart into ions, which can be dangerous, cause cancer, or, and or ultimately death. So that's what we're concerned with. So when we're talking about radiation, we're looking at alpha, beta, and then x-ray and gamma, which are largely basically the same. So this is working on the principle of, rather than a Geiger counter, which go into a little bit on a minute, of essentially looking at those alpha and beta, this is mainly looking at gamma x-rays because gamma rays are pretty much always associated with other radiation, i.e. alpha and beta. So if you're able to detect those gamma rays, then you're able to detect radiation or a potential radiological threat. And radiation can come from all kinds of things. Like actually one of the isotopes of potassium in bananas is radioactive. So yeah, bananas give off radiation, albeit a little tiny bit. So we'll get into, I guess, kind of how a traditional Geiger counter works and then how this works again just kind of creating a foundation. The traditional Geiger tube is basically filled with a gas and when radiation hits it, it clicks. And so it's also not very sensitive to X-rays, gamma rays, which this is. And then the other part is not very accurate in that it can't differentiate between a high energy or a low energy particle. And then lastly, which this can, and then lastly, the other issue is it can get saturated. So it'll give you a, hey, like we're maxed out, which it is, but this will actually max out at a much higher level. So rather than giving kind of a false positive as far as like, hey, this is insanely dangerous right here, which it might be dangerous, but this will actually tell you at what level of danger it is rather than just getting totally maxed out because again, it's just getting saturated. Again, kind of wild concepts, but we'll continue on. Instead of using a Geiger tube, this uses a scintillator. Might be pronouncing that right. And as I understand it, when radiation hits it, it gives off a little bit of light. So you're able to have multiple metrics in the sense of how often is it getting hit? And then it also measures the intensity. So how bright that light is. So the intensity of the radiation giving you a much more accurate reading than one of those Geiger tubes. So now we'll get into, I guess, units of measure, because that's important. So the unit of measurement used kind of globally for radiation, probably mispronouncing this, sievert, I want to say. And then in the US, they use rim. Those two are crazy numbers, but those are the metrics and to make them usable because of like how many decimal points you have a micro sievert and a millirem and one micro sievert is equivalent to 10 millirems again wild numbers but those are the numbers you're looking at with respect to what this unit's detecting so we'll get into I guess briefly the idea of like bad radiation and kind of what those numbers mean on some sort of scale. 
Typically, people are annually exposed to, over the course of a year, about 3,000 microsieverts of radiation or 300 millirems of radiation. In the U.S., if you're working around radioactive equipment, they say, hey, you need to annually be exposed to less than 50,000 microsieverts or 5,000 millirems, I guess it would be which is significantly more than someone is annually exposed to. Again, those are just random kind of nebulous numbers. And something to keep in mind is it's about the amount of radiation over the amount of time. So people generally exposed to 3,000 milli, ah, millisieverts over the course of a year, but you could be exposed to 50,000 over the course of the year and still be okay, ideally less than that. But again, we get back to time exposures. So with respect to go get a chest X-ray or a CT scan, it's a really high dosage of radiation over a really short period of time. So again, that danger scale, you're still on the safe end because of the time element. It's this weird balancing act. So this is going to, well, we'll get into how this is working now. Right here is the unit. Over here, we have our on switch. It's just down is off, up is on. Over here is volume, down is no volume, up is volume. And then right in the middle, we switch between the different screens. So turn it on right here. Power's up and it'll go to the first screen. This first screen, it's a bar graph, basically going or measuring rather, it says down here in the micro sieverts per hour. Bottom left, it says normal, depending on what it's picking up. It has the potential to say high or danger. And this bar graph is basically going from point, or sorry, 0 0.1 up to 10 mega sieverts an hour, depending on where it is there. And then we press this to go to the second screen and this is basically that same screen it's just using a different metric so this one in the millirems per hour and then if we hit this again we go to the third screen and this is basically the raw count per minute so again cpm count per minute this is what that scintillator is picking up as far as little ticks of radiation coming in every minute and then Going to the fourth screen, this is again bar graph showing from 0 0.01 up to 10,000 micro sieverts per hour. And each one is kind of scaled. So initially it's the zero and then it's to the 0 0.1, the one, 10 on up, like the way that scale works. Pressing it again. This is actually probably one of the cooler screens where it's actually giving you cumulative measured values. So since you turn this on over however much time, it's giving you the average clicks per minute as well as the average microsievert or milli, man, so many confusing words, millirems. And so this gives you that, all that information. So if you just turn this thing on and leave it on, it's giving you a accurate record over the course of however long you leave this on of what kind of radiation exposure there is. And as far as battery life, these on two alkaline lithium, one of those generally give you close to about 40 hours of runtime, like constant. And then to save power, you go to this next one and this will, again, it's not using as much power because the screen's not lit other than you'll see a little dot and that's the click. So when it's registering, and then one more click and it's basically showing like, hey, this is the like firmware, everything like that. One more time, we go back to that first menu. I know it is a ton of information and something that is cool because you're like, how do I know this thing's working? Well, you can actually get some test material, radioactive test material, and 
you can hear it start to go crazy. It was at 0 0.04 microsieverts. It is now at 1.54, and that says high, where it did say normal. It's up to 2.03 microsieverts, 2.4. 2.48, still registering high. My guess is the sample's not enough to get it to danger. 2.44, 2.47, 2.45, yeah, high. Now again, keeping in mind that scale of the intensity and the exposure. So that was 2.7 microsieverts, I guess, or 2.45 microsieverts, which was high. But you go get a chest x-ray, it can be like 10 microsieverts or 10, 100 microsieverts or a CT scan, which is like 10,000 microsieverts. But again, really short window of exposure. So you're like, how do I actually use this thing in a meaningful way? Fortunately, you can get basically a handy cheat sheet to go with this to print it off, take a photo, whatever you want to do. And it's essentially a graph giving you both those units, whether it's the microsievert, which I've probably been mispronouncing this whole time, or the millirem and exposure per hour with colors like, hey, how dangerous is this? Because again, where does this come into play? One, there's an education piece. About radiation like you can go seek out radiate or radioactive stuff to include honestly in antique shops some of that stuff was made with radioactive materials and even some different minerals and stuff like that which is pretty neat but the other part is hey what about if things completely go sideways on the global scale does it mean everyone immediately dies no absolutely not a lot of that stuff is localized and it's a half-life so it continually gets shorter and shorter and it's not like you can never go there forever although some places probably don't ever want to go there but this allows you to basically make a decision first and foremost probably shelter in place and then from there being able to basically make a informed decision on where you're going if there's a radiological threat. And if there is, like, oh, like, there's definitely a radiological threat here, have to go through here, look at the number, look at the graph, and be like, okay, I can tolerate this for this period of time, like, safely, air quotes, and being able to, again, make an informed decision if there's a radiological threat, whether it's a spill, for whatever reason, every train seems to crash this year. So if a train crash, some sort of radiological disaster, whatever it may be, you can make an informed decision on, hey, there's this much radiation in this area. I can be here for a little while because maybe there's a task that needs to happen, or I need to move through this area, or hey, not worth the squeeze, I need to immediately leave. And so this allows you to basically make those informed decisions. Again, to reiterate, not fear-mongering. Do not expect nuclear war tomorrow, but comma, just kidding. When I actually spoke to the guy who owns the company, designed this, made this, really cool guy, and he was coming at it from a place of education. Like, he's passionate about it. He works in that field like as an engineer. And so with that, there's like cheap options, I guess we'll say, that don't work very well using those Geiger tubes I mentioned, or ones using the scintillators are like a thousand bucks. And so he's like, hey, how can I make something more affordable and more accessible to people for the sake of education? And because of the world we live in, there's absolutely like a preparedness side to it as well with respect to that value. So he came out with these. Price-wise, I want to say about 150 bucks and pretty cool. Works off of two AA batteries. 
Operating temperature I want to say is negative 10 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Doesn't like water, so for an extra 30 you can get a waterproof container for it. Basically nests inside there and I want to say if you want to get test material, it's another 30 bucks. Overall, I think it's a pretty neat unit, again, from those two different standpoints. One being education, two, potential preparedness. So if you're interested, there'll be a link down below and yeah, you can go check them out. He also has a bunch of just kind of information there with respect to kind of radiation, how it works, all of that stuff. A whole little education on that. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbatch.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Take out.